So the first thing we do is cut the, a, a, a draft in, is what it's called. So, so you don't take any corners off when you come back and take the bulk of it off. So we've done that on the top and the bottom now. Uh, What's the difference in your chisels when you're, when you're doing this sort of work? Uh, each chisel kind of like takes the marks out of the other ones. This one here is a, takes the bulk off. So um, use a different hammer as well. So you don't want to ruin the end of your good chisels either. So that's why you use the this, this um, metal hammer with it. What's the difference in the ends on this? Uh, this is a mallet headed one and this is just a normal for a metal So it's a bit blunter and... It's get a bit of a sharper kind of blow than what you do with the, the um, wooden mallet. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's a bit like duller. Yeah. And is, it, is it hardened steel or is it just... Uh, these ones, new ones now, have got tungsten in them, but they all used to be like um, from the blacksmith yep. forge type of thing. Yeah. So after we kind of take the bulk off like that, we use a, a point. We um, take it down to a little bit further. Here's this. It's got to be careful, that's why I cut the draft in before so we don't take the corners off. Good. And how, did, how long did it take you to sort of get your confidence to know that you weren't going to be going too deep? Or uh, it takes a couple of years, I think, to get your proper confidence up. When you when you're a bit younger, you think you're confident, but then you take a big corner off, or you actually end up going in too far, and you realise you're not as confident as what you, what all your skills aren't as good as what your confidence are. <laughs> then a, a scutch, which um, takes out the the chisel marks for me should actually fix this up a little bit. So we're cutting a big chamfer off here so we can um, get rid of all the bulk. You can see on the end there it's got the line across where they're going to cut all that waste material off. And it's good just to protect these corners here because once they fall off you can't put them back on again. Because I think that's something people assume is that you can always go back through with a bit of sandstone filler and yeah. start making mistakes, but once it's gone, it's gone. Yep, start again. And um, if you do a stone that takes like four weeks to kind of, you know, make as well, that once you've done three weeks' work, you don't want to do that whole three weeks again for, for nothing as well. Because they, they would have been paid for completing a finished piece of stone. So if you do, you know, stuff it up, then start again. It might be a couple of weeks without pay too. Yeah, right. Yeah, so you want to make sure you don't make mistakes. Yeah. Cut, cut, one, cut once, measure twice, measure three times. Yep. Yeah. But sometimes, though, mistakes happen. The sandstone from Kermot is a different colour to most of the other sandstone too, isn't it? Yes, it's, go, it's like, like this colour here, but then it goes, turns into this after a while. Yeah, gold like a goldy, yellowy type of colour. Right. Yeah. But that, that one there is like 100 years old though. That only takes like five or so years though for it to come out. Right. Yeah. Yep. Now, now is that part of the consideration too when, you, when, you, when you're working on old buildings to make sure you're matching? So you save the Piermont sandstone up for those refurbishments on the... Yeah. Yep. And then we've got another stone that's an Appen, sort of Appen out, the, out um, Southern Highlands type of thing. Um, it's got a really coarse grain, it's good for like seawalls and salt conditions. So um, every, every stone's kind of different as well. Yeah, and it, it's even different to work as well, each different stone. All the masons like working this one though because it's like nice to cut. And you know, you can tell where it's going to break type of thing. Yeah. yeah. How much of the job is that? It's just knowing, becoming familiar with the material and understanding how it will respond to each blow of the hammer? Yeah. Um, Sandstone is like a tour of free stones because it can, it's, it's really easy to work and it breaks easy. You don't have to actually follow the bed like you do in, in say, like timber carving where you've got to follow the grain. Yeah, so it, it's nice to work though. Um, the softer it is, sometimes it's a bit harder to work too. 
makes it a bit difficult. Why is that? Uh, just because, um, you know, you just get used to, you know, hitting it at a certain thick, uh, hardness type of thing, and then when you go onto a softer stone, you've got to really concentrate and not dig your chisels in too much. Yeah. Let's make this bit bigger. We want a nice big draft on there so we don't take any chips off because once the chip goes past that line there then, then it's no, no good anymore. So the idea of doing that is it does put an edge on so that, it, so that anything you do after the bigger mallet's going to always yeah, tap on that line. Yeah, like if it breaks off like there it comes off and breaks off to that point there, it doesn't go past it hopefully. Yeah, so all, all the way you kind of work is you work to avoid mistakes. Yeah. How, how much of your time do you think is, is, the, is that set up to prepare for doing the, doing the major work just, just to avoid mistakes? Um, it's just that it's like um, a process that you have to go through. It's just the start of the process, step one type of thing. Yeah, you, you can do it like without it and kind of hope for the best, but um, you know, it's good, it's good to just um, do it the right way the first time and get quicker at doing it that way instead of taking shortcuts. At least, you, at least you know you you can um, you've done all all you can to help not make a mistake. This punch here is just the a tool for getting the bulk off quickly, and you can make them out of any bit of old steel. They're not really that precious, really. If you lose one, then that's the way it goes. So then we, we've done all the uh, we've done the uh, punching on the top there to kind of take the bulk off there. And now we go on with a claw, which will remove like the tool marks of this one, and then leave these ones. They do the same again. You start off on the edge. Of a quick check, see how you're going. Great, it's pretty, pretty good. 